Liz, welcome to uh, Radio Springfield City. Peter, thank you so much. This is very exciting. It is a very exciting period for all of us and in particular to have uh, a number of our guests joining us with this program that we call At Your Service and an opportunity to talk about um, uh, different businesses and how they evolved and the like and and it gives us an opportunity to find out a bit more about uh, Liz Ward and also Navi. So what's the Liz Ward story, please? Liz. Ah, the Liz Ward story. Well, I guess to keep it relevant to the topic, quite a while ago, <laughs> let's, let's say, I don't know, 25, 27 years ago, I was involved in creating websites before we actually knew the term digital. Wow. We didn't, you know, it was a really emerging yes. uh, business tool. And uh, I was working in the tourism industry at the time. And so I was responsible for project managing, working with some very clever people, the very first ever Destination Queensland website. Okay. So that was pretty exciting and online booking system attached to that for agents. And like I said, this is before we use the term digital. So right. it was very, very new. And so I was fortunate that I was out of the starting gates with the new world of the internet. And that then led on to developing a career in that space where I was working on strategies that were really good for business to help them to adapt to technology. And I went on to start up something called the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse, which is like an online marketplace for tourism operators. This was back in the late 90s. Right. And then I went on to be its CEO for 10 years. And I don't know if you know this, but the tourism industry is made up, it's comprised 90% small businesses. And so everything you're doing when you're working in tourism really is to help small businesses to, you know, make the most of the opportunity, have the lifestyle that they're looking and, and have a sustainable business. Mm. And I really had an urge to put my money where my mouth was and experience not only being the CEO of a business and having leadership positions, but to have my own business. I really wanted to to just see if I could also make it like these amazing people who would be great people listening to us today who've been entrepreneurial and started their own business. So I wanted to do the same thing. So I was very fortunate that I have a wonderful, I had a wonderful colleague and friend at the time, Fabian Wintle, who is a digital genius. And she and I teamed up because we were looking at the way that small businesses try to get assistance with adopting technology and bringing new processes and, and marketing methods into their business and how it can be really hard for a small business to do that. They're often running several jobs themselves yes. and don't have a lot of time. They might see some government-sponsored workshop and they dash off to that for a couple of hours and then they get back to work and it's too, they're too busy mm -hmm. to actually implement anything. Yep. So we started in the tourism sector and we developed a website, a platform called Tourism Tribe, and that's been really successful where we take services to them so they can come online and get really personalised help with putting changes in their business, doing learning, converting that learning into knowledge. And it was being successful in that area that the federal government said to us um, and selected us for a really great grant and asked us to start up NAVI. Right. So NAVI is for small business generally and it's all about helping people to be able to adapt to the change because it's moving so quickly, of course, technology to give them real people service, but also use technology ourselves to be able to serve lots of people, to be able to get some really practical know-how and some assistance to be able to adopt to the changes that technology is forcing upon us. So here we are running our, our love child, Navi, and having a great time doing it. So Liz, that leads us quite nicely to what we're going to discuss today in our inaugural Big Ideas for small business program that Navi is going to be bringing to our listeners on a monthly basis. So there's no doubt that the business environment has been very tough over the last two years. And I'm sure that you'll be uh, informing us that technology has continued to evolve and drive change in business. So Liz, tell us what you're going to share with us uh, in the show today about that technology. Peter, what I wanted to share are some ideas and information 
that's really geared to business people thinking about we're in the early stages of 22. We've been through so much change over the last two years on incredible mm. because of COVID. But people are thinking about how they'll achieve their next business goals. And they're thinking about what they should be investing their time in or their money in and prioritising in terms of business improvement. Right. You know, whenever we ask small businesses through programs that we run and we get to have lots of interaction with hundreds of small businesses on a weekly basis, what are the most important issues for them when they're thinking about achieving their goals in business and growing their business? It comes down to three areas. It's always, these things are always on the top of the list. One is they want to acquire more customers. Secondly, improve how they convert those sales online. Right and then also using social media better. Sometimes it's all three, but always these three opportunities are at the top of the list. And we see that when they sign up for the Navi Learning Programs. So in our first show today, what I wanted to do was share some really recent research and ideas relating to um, digital technology and consumer trends and mm -hmm. how consumers are using it. Great. Because these are things that small businesses absolutely need to know so that they can make 22 a really successful year for them and then share some ideas on what they should be prioritizing to grow their businesses and keep pace with their customers. I think we all know, everybody listening knows that consumers' use of technology often moves much more quickly and outpaces businesses' mm -hmm. ability to adopt technology. You know, consumers are replacing those phones, jumping on, they're using the latest apps. Meanwhile, the small business is like, okay, I'm still coming to grips with my Zero <laughs> app or for accounting, you know, yeah. what about the marketing side or, you know, what am I doing? Should I be worried about this thing called TikTok? Do I need, yes. you know, whereas consumers just run with it. We have different perspectives. We we don't have time to, to experiment so much in business. But the problem is that technology now can very much be used as a competitive advantage. So we see, you know, we, we want businesses to be able to meet the needs of their customers and, and keep up with businesses that are able to do that using technology. I'll also, at the end of the program, share a link to an article on the navi.com.au website that provides some more information about these trends so people mm -hmm. can go and have a read of it. And then there's links there to some of our free, very short courses so that listeners have got somewhere to turn for some more help. Thanks, Liz. We we'll look forward to hearing about that uh, very, very shortly. We're talking to the co-founder and CEO of Navi Digital, Liz Ward. We'll come back to Water Liz in just a few moments. Welcome back to Radio Springfield City's At Your Service program. And today, we're looking at big ideas for small business with co-founder and CEO for Navi Digital, Liz Ward. Now, before we go back to Liz, we'd like to invite you to join us via the Radio Springfield City Facebook page or the Navi Digital Facebook page and join in the conversation. Now, Hannah is very much a part of the Navi team and she'll be only too happy to respond to any queries that you may have on the topics that we've covered this morning. So Liz, could you tell us about the digital and consumer trends that businesses need to know about if they want to be successful in 2022? I think everybody's gotten used to the continual evolution and you know the rapid change of technology. We're just used to that now that it changes quickly but I thought it's probably worthwhile just before we get into the the latest trends just to reflect on the big changes since we first started using websites mm -hmm. if we think about late 80s early 90s and this thing called the internet starts to become public knowledge people start getting connected and into the mid 90s we see companies for the first time starting to develop their own, have a website. And I'm sure some listeners would reflect on that and remember their first kind of digital <laughs> brochure that they put online Very and, true. and yes. dial up and modems and how slowly it went and all of that. 98, we had Google arrive and people could then actually search. So that was useful. They could search for these websites. 2004, Facebook, and that totally changed the way mm. we thought about the internet because all of a sudden there was this way of being able to connect with the community that just took off. Yes, there'd been some other attempts with other social sites, but this one just went like wildfire. 
And in 2005, I think a really big one was YouTube. Uh, of course. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely massive. So the launch of um, video sharing. And of course, how many listeners now would rely on YouTube for so many things in their personal life? Hand up here. What yep. was your last YouTube video that you looked for, Peter? Uh, it was to do with uh, SpaceX, actually, uh, just last night. Ah, there you go. You are yes. curious. And, of course, you found a mountain of content. A mountain of information, absolutely. Through. I got a new car recently. I tell you what, the YouTube video videos are so much better than the manual. Yes, very, <laughs> And they're all very about true. four minutes long. Correct, so correct. And the other big one then was 2007 with the iPhone that Apple gave mm -hmm. the marketplace. And, you know, that just changed everything in terms of it was the beginning of people having mobile access to content and products, social media As platforms. you say, it's that accessibility in your hands yes. there and then. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And then 2010, I think it's worth saying, that's when Instagram came out. So that's where we saw the way that people shared information and about their lives and their photos. We saw this, you know, really successful photo imagery platform. So, you know, so we're used to the change, but that's old news now, 2010. But things just kept moving in that time. But I think what we've had the ability to reflect on since we've gotten to this stage of COVID two years in is... The last two years and the accelerated adoption of technology by our customers, yeah. by the consumer, has just been incredible. And it's about now for us as businesses, for us to be able to take care of them, their expectations are higher. They are really clear about, they really want value from their suppliers and their they expect more and the quality of service has become a big one that they now expect in exchange for their dollars and loyalty. That's all amped up and I'll talk some more about those changes in a sec. Uh, just to give you a few examples though of that consumer savviness and how it's grown with digital, obvious one is QR codes. Oh, absolutely. You know, how many people even really knew what a QR code was mm -hmm. before COVID? Yeah. And now, you know, all generations, they're scanning. Imagine if you had shares in Zoom. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> how wealthy yeah. would you be? And what do you think the three most said words would have to have been in the last two years? <laughs> Uh, I've looked at your notes, so I've got a fair <laughs> idea. But you're spot on. You're spot on. Yeah, so yeah. you're on mute. Mm -hmm. How many times have you said that? Yep. But, of course, once again, it's not just to one generation or business sense because we've seen enormous use of live video, you know, conferencing, families talking to each other overseas on Facebook. We've just been in lockdown with our parents in our village, so... Yeah, just being able to talk to them on Zoom. Yeah, so there you are. You've got just, you know, basically all generations are now using their phones, tablets to be able to connect using video. Amazing changes. Big one for business has been the online purchasing growth for essentials, food, alcohol. Yes. Seen as a very essential item in, in lockdowns. Entertainment, pharmaceutical uh, you know, products. Australia Post reported that online purchases grew by over 23% over the previous year. My recently. goodness, that's amazing. That's amazing, isn't it? And that's been largely driven by growth of online purchasing in what PayPal referred to as their silver tech generation. Okay. So, you know, those with silver hair, 50 to 75 years of age. For them, it was the first time that they had to do this. And it came down to convenience and safety of cashless payments. They couldn't go to the shop. They didn't want to be handling cash. So it was a good solution for them. What that's meant now is we've got an entire marketplace that if as consumers, they can't quickly and easily get the information that they need from your business online and can't buy or order from you pretty instantly, mm. then they're really not interested in doing business with you. You know, they'll turn to another supplier. So it's really moved a lot in terms of a number of years ago. Yes, we were saying to businesses, you have to have a decent website. Yes, you should have a Google My Business listing. It'd be good if you knew something about search engine optimization. Mm. That was all still about findability and marketing. It's gone much further than that now. This is about actually being able to do business with you online and engage with you on their terms. 
so when we come back, we might explore some of those things because I think they're probably the most important for small businesses. And we'll do that very, very shortly. We're talking to Liz Ward, co-founder and CEO of Navi Digital, and we will be back very shortly. We're joined today by Liz Ward, the co-founder and CEO with Navi Digital, and this is The Big Ideas for Small Business, and today we're looking at some of the technologies that Liz is sharing with us. Look, I, I think there's one really, there's multiple opportunities, but the first one I'd like to talk about is, I mentioned before about the massive you know, exponential increase in people using Zoom and FaceTime and generally using video. Our customers as businesses are now anticipating video as part of their purchase journey. Mm -hmm. So it's a real competitive advantage if if you can provide that to them. You know, they're super familiar with using video on computers or tablets or their phones, um, and even the grandparents are doing that. So the reason that they're interested in it, and the stats have been telling telling us this for years, is that video is far more engaging and communicates much more readily and quickly than still images do it engages people more and certainly still images communicate much more quickly than words in workshops that we run and coaching sessions we've been telling businesses for years now that video is something that they need to start to incorporate into their business but now since covid and the changes that instagram and facebook have made where they're really encouraging people to post a lot of videos say through some listeners may be familiar with stories or reels on Instagram, for example, and not to mention the growth in TikTok and all Mm. the advertising that they've been doing. Video is now, for businesses, I believe it's a real must-have in marketing and sales and customer service for their business. Yeah, but Liz, can I just challenge you a bit on that? Um, That might be a big ask for small business, you know, to get a professional video created and learn how to use it in their different marketing channels, though. Yes, you may have thought that a couple years ago, but do you know what else has really changed over the recent period is that consumers' expectations for the quality of the video has been relaxed. Okay. Because people now are so conditioned to do-it-yourself videos on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, they're also accepting of businesses making their own videos. And for videos to work when businesses provide them, they do need to be authentic, authentic. because that's what builds trust. Right. Yeah, so it builds trust with Good the customer point. if they, they say that's real. So it's okay to make your own videos, but of course, just like when you're, you know, you've know, you got your microphone set up for the radio show, they have to be of a standard that you're happy with, You know that you feel really does represent the level of professionalism in your right. brand. Yep. For example, you don't want to have lousy sound or too much light so that the the, the vision is is not good on the video. Mm. So the content must also support, you know, that brand image that you're wanting to project. And that includes the style, you know, the tone of voice that you use. You want to be consistent with that. But you can the good thing about learning to do videos is it's just all practice. Right. And and everybody's got a very suitable piece of equipment in their back pocket or in their handbag, which of course is their latest phone, which is more than adequate. And there are so, so many apps and tools available to help people to very quickly do a quick edit, add subtitles, get transcripts done automatically. There's so much (laughs) you can do. So it's it's just become become something that we need to learn. I will differentiate though, and that's with regard to your website. I always say your website is your most important online shop front. It's like somebody walking off the high street. If, if, you had a, if you had a real shop front, you want to make the very best impression. So that video that you have on your home page, which we would say is the hero yes. video, and that's going to be introducing your business and what you offer to a potential customer. So this does need to be shot by a professional because those first impressions are so important. So we we would say that as well. The other ways though that businesses can be more competitive by using video is to think about the different stages of their customer's purchase journey. So we're talking about the pre-purchase when they're shopping around online, sort of looking at what the options are for what they're looking for. There's the purchase. So they've actually 
Yahoo, they've gotten mm-hmm. onto your website. That's fantastic. That's yeah. an achievement when you think about Absolutely. all of the options for people in Google. They're on your website. They're looking for detailed information about your products or services. And then there's the post purchase or that after sales service. So they've bought from you and they have questions relating to your products or services, maybe how to use them or maintain them. So imagine, put yourself into the headspace and the behaviours of your very best sales or customer service staff and you know how would they be helping them at each of those stages of the purchase journey that will drive your thinking in terms of well, what do i need to make a video about right so it just really has that logic and structure to it and um you know present it in a friendly you know clear format and you know they'll love you for that because you're giving them short sharp detailed information not too long we don't want these videos to be long Mm -hmm. and that will really help to to build their trust and their loyalty and of course you'll get great online reviews as well which we want you to have all right we'll come back and talk more to liz in just a little while from radio springfield city we're talking to the co-founder and the ceo for navi digital liz ward today Liz, what else can you share with our listeners about what they need to consider for their business in 2022? You know, Peter, a big change that I'm really excited about that has come out of COVID has been a general trend towards better customer service. Now, some of the listeners might be going, oh, that's not always true. Well, nothing's always (laughs) true, but... Um, What we have seen, and I'll share some examples with you, is that by using technology smartly and bringing those improvements in through technology into your business, reconfiguring your business model to meet the needs of consumers in COVID, the consumers have been winners. Mm -hmm. So businesses responded, a lot of them made big changes and consumers were really happy about that and it kept the businesses alive as well so it's been an amazing wholesale shift in terms of businesses being willing to change which has been fantastic but when we've done our research there's a few things that really stood out for me that i wanted to share in terms of consumer trends and what we've seen happening in business right and like i said whilst there are exceptions generally something that's improved is delivery times for products that you've purchased online you know that's improved markedly think about those orders of whatever you've purchased online whether that's your Mm -hmm. box of wine or that dyson vacuum cleaner you bought in the black friday sale guilty changed my (laughs) life though love it you don't only get it quickly you can track its journey to your front door which is amazing using and that's using digital technology but this one i absolutely love and that is that there has been a shift to what we define as more empathetic service yeah it's really interesting customers and it'll make sense when i explain it customers have experienced being cared about and have experienced a more personalized service than they've had before during covid Now, what we uncovered is that this was led by the financial sector and tech companies. So big businesses can teach us something. We hear repeatedly of lending organisations taking a, you know, kinder, more more patient approach with their lending customers during COVID. And then tech companies relaxing terms on licensing of a software or equipment and extending so customers could extend the leases without payment. So very true. Yeah, so it's been fantastic. And I've got this amazing example of a tech company. They're called Review Pro, and for it's in the hospitality and tourism space where they have oh, thousands and thousands of small business customers where they have software, it's like a dashboard, where the small business can manage all of their online reviews from lots of different sources, hundreds of different sources. And they're able to, you know, they use it to respond, they use it to see where there's gaps in their services that they could improve, etc. It's very useful. What they did, that business, is they did not let any staff go. One, they used them to make contact to phone every one of their customers during COVID and just check in on them occasionally to see how they were because a lot of these businesses were in lockdown and couldn't operate. It was very tough. Mm. It's just starting to emerge in some states now in Australia that they're reopening. And the other thing they did is they just extended their software license. Right. So they said, just like, we're just going to move the date out. So I thought, you know, that's an amazing example. So 
not only was it empathy at the at the heart of this shift, and we didn't use that word previously when we talked about customer service in the past. We probably should have, but we didn't. But it's very much also about what we call personalization. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. And yep. the customer loves it. They want more of it. And that's now what they expect from businesses. Mm -hmm. They don't expect you to be talking to the masses as a business. Just me. Just to you. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So technology um, absolutely was a key enabler for these companies to change the way that they interacted with their customers and to deliver this more personalised service and with empathy. And a typical tool they use and small businesses can use it too is live chat on their website and instant messaging. Okay. So we've seen that on bigger. You think maybe you've been on to... My um, bank. Yeah, yep. that's right. Chat. A little live chat yes. there. But they've had to improve that. It's had to... They've used artificial intelligence to make it smarter and... Mm. And they've then, you know, handled all the all the common inquiries that way, but then had the customer service staff, even if they're working from home, able to speak to people. So high tech, high touch. And that's the balance we've got to move to. High tech, high touch. So for a small business, the steps they're going to take is to put a live chat on their website because that's what people want to do. Yep. People have got their AirPods in or, you know, their speakers in their ears, listening to music. They just want, they're just doing a quick message to the business. Have you got this? Or Good point. What is this? Yes. They, don't, they don't want to make the phone call. They've gotten used to right. just making quick instant message. So live chat on a website is not... Uh, an expensive thing to do. A lot of websites have a, a, a free plugin that you can do, or you can attach the Facebook Messenger chat widget to do that as well. Is a, is a good solution. So, Liz, are you saying that small business can emulate big business and also provide the type of personalised service that uh, consumers are seeking? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they have to. So whilst the big players and, this, you know, they keep coming into the marketplace, like Amazon, for example, Amazon in Australia, mm. you know, you think of all of the products that they sell that Australian local businesses already sold. Now, not everyone wants to buy from Amazon. A lot of customers, consumers are looking for the local business mm -hmm. and want to support them. So we want your type of business to be coming up on the top of page one of Google because if you're on page two, you might as well be buried. Um, <laughs> but because true. where you hide a body yes, is page yeah. two of Google. <laughs> yeah. Because you've got a niche small business, you're selling something niche, you're doing it really well. So it's really super important that you've got the fundamentals in place to be able to firstly be found by your ideal customer, so your target market, but then to engage them on their terms. So if they do manage to get to your website and their only option is to phone you and it's 10 o'clock at night because I've just turned off the TV or you've got maybe your email address on there, they know they're going to have to wait to mm. hear from you how many days they don't know. For them, a simple, if you've got that online chat, this is just one example of working on their terms, they get the impression that, oh, okay, they get me. They know that I'd rather do it this way. Even if you've got it set up to have an automatic response on it to say, we'll get back to you first yes. thing in the morning, at least you're allowing them to engage in the, the way that that they want to. So ultimately, we as small business, we can look at these big businesses, but use small business appropriate and often low cost or no cost tech to offer the same sort of service. We certainly want to use smart, low cost platforms to market our businesses, but we can also use technology to scale our business too and and make them more efficient. And that's certainly been our business story in, in Navi and in Tourism Tribe, is we have been able to use small business type technology apps to be able to scale the business so that we can service lots of people at the same time. So it, it works really well. Well, Liz, I can't wait to get into all these other opportunities with you and the Navi team in future shows. And and it's obvious that we've got a, a, a lot of other topics to cover and you've got certainly a lot of information to share with our listeners. We do have a lot of information, Peter. We have a lot of information in the bank through, you know, our, our, our trainers, our content team, our specialists are always working on, on updating 
courses and information that can be really helpful to people. But it's also the knowledge that we can share. And that's what makes us tick, you know, Mm. because if we can transfer that knowledge and if that means it empowers a small business owner or a manager to implement some really positive change, even if it's just phase changes and one change at a time and it improves their competitiveness, well, I can tell you that is what makes our team very happy. So where can our listeners go for more information about what you've shared with us today and to get some help from Navi? Jump on to navi.com.au, onto our blog menu. You'll see the blog post there called Digital Trends That Small Businesses Must Be Aware Of for 2022. Now, there's some, certainly covered are are some of the points that I shared with you. And there's some nice examples in there as well that people will be able to have a look at in terms of video ideas, for example. Also, the Radio Springfield City Facebook page. Correct. We'll have a link there to the blog post. And also the Radio Springfield City website, which is radiospringfieldcity.com.au. You're listening to Radio Springfield City and our At Your Service program. And this month we're looking at big ideas for small business. And we'll come back and wrap up this month's session with Liz Ward, the CEO and co-founder of Navi Digital, in just a few moments. So Liz, just before we go this morning, I believe that the the federal government made some changes in the recent budget that businesses may be able to take advantage of. Yeah, it's really good news, Peter. I think it's a really smart initiative. What they've done is they've um, announced in the federal budget, and it's already commenced, so it's not a promise, it's Mm -hmm. actually happening. It commenced on the 29th of March that businesses that fit into the small and medium-sized category, so that's, and it's pretty generous, it's like up to $50 million turnover. I'm sure there's lots of listeners that would go, I'd be happy to be (laughs) a small business and turning over $50 million. What they can do for what they're calling small business skills and training boost, and it's focused on, on digital, is that you can get a, a full tax deduction plus 20% for any expenditure for yourself as a business owner or staff who you're getting upskilled to be able to be more proficient in digital. So I think that's really great. So, yeah. you know, it's an immediate tax deduction plus 20%. So it's 120% of what you spend on an online course or coaching, consulting, advice, etc., so that you as a business can be more capable and more confident with digital and, and your digital transformation. And Liz, is there a cut-off time for that? It's through to the end of June 24. Oh, 20, crikey. But Great. it's up to $550 million. So I guess the, the bucket could run dry. We yeah. should get in there and do it as quickly as possible. So if anyone wants some more information on that, obviously they can Google ATO, 120% tax deduction, but they can also jump on to one of our team on navi.com.au, navii.com.au onto our chat and one of the team would be happy to direct them to the link. Of course, we can help them out with some coaching and training as well. But there's more. This Tell is like me. A, a set of steak knives. It just keeps coming. <laughs> and this is also exciting too. And this was only revealed a few days ago for listeners who subscribe to the Queensland Small Business, you know, the state government, Small Business Department's newsletter. They've announced a round three of what they call the Business Basics Grant And what this is, is $5,000, pretty much no questions asked. You've got to apply for it. And it is about business improvement. And the areas there, again, that uh, are a core focus are digital. So if, and we've delivered on two previous rounds of grants to, you know, many different clients who were successful in getting the $5,000 for things like developing a marketing plan with Mm -hmm. them. So it's like succession planning and, you know, building feasibility your future strength in your business, etc. Giving them coaching on improving their website or their online presence or developing a social media plan, helping with improvements to their website. So we'll pass on to a, a a web developer who we trust and work with who is, you know, doing some back-end improvements or search engine optimising 
optimization improvements to their website and even basic things like we were talking about in the session today you know learning how to get some video into your marketing make sure that you are using social smartly so addressing those fundamentals that that people need to have so that's super exciting that they're doing a third round and it's available to all Queensland businesses who have a turnover up to $300,000, so a little bit different to the federal yes. threshold. And what happens with these grants is when they open, and this one will open at 9am on the 4th of May, they go like hotcakes, like within a few hours it will be closed. So what we've done with previous clients is get we tell them get everything ready. So we'll give them the quote, They'll go in, They we've given them inf- information to help them to know how to complete it. And then they've got all their information sitting on the desk yep. and then they go bang, bang, bang and, and submit it and get it in. And that date is the, the 4th of May? 4th of May, 9am. So once again, if they jump onto navi.com.au onto, or, or onto the chat, live chat or email help at navi.com.au, we'll be more than happy to pass the information on to them. That's great news to finish off with today. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, great. So, Liz, we're going to come back next month and we've got uh, an interesting series of subjects to be talking about. Well, it's really in line with what we were just talking about then, about getting help Mm. and reaching out to um, suppliers, be that web developers or people might, might... you think you, you're getting emails about search engine optimization and how that could be improved, but it's who do you trust? Yeah. How do you know how to engage a digital expert? And so we're going to be sharing tips and a checklist that our team have put together because I cannot tell you how many times we encounter this with people who we are helping who've got a broken a broken relationship with their web developer or they've, yeah, they're paying for search engine optimization. They've got no clue what they're paying for. Mm. So they're just being a bit hoodwinked because they don't have the digital literacy yeah. to be able to know what questions to ask. So that's what we're going to focus on in the show next month. Look forward to catching up with you then, Liz. Thanks for your time this month. Thank you. Thanks, Peter.